Hey everybody, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. We're going to talk today about uh, quite a few books, actually, and I'm not even sure how many. I just got to kind of go through my notes here. You know, part of the reason why I, I stopped for so long is because of what happened here. I just... I really enjoyed Venom and Reigns, and, and Down Shadow was a bit of a struggle for me, but I, I dug it overall. And, uh, you know, and, and, and like generally when I do a, a group of five and I'd been releasing them, I would wait until like number three or number four was coming out, and then I would start on more, or maybe maybe I'd wait until after five and come out. In any, any case, I would, I would kind of start and I would be like, yeah, I'm going to... Uh, hunker down and I'm gonna focus on these and it might take a while because but I'm I'm gonna kind of work my way towards another group of five and generally what I do is I read one fantasy and one sci-fi book so uh, like what I was doing for the like all of, most of 2015 was I, I would be reading a realms book and reading a Warhammer 40k book and then I started reading more Warhammer fantasy and blah 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 anyway point being uh, that was kind of my rhythm but I got to this point where you know, like I, I mentioned Prophet of the Dead last time, really didn't get into it. So I kind of took a break, did something, I did a Warhammer Fantasy, came back, and I read uh, Corsair by Richard Baker. And normally I really enjoy Richard Baker's stuff, but for whatever reason, this one just, I, you know, like this trilogy just, it started off really strongly, and there were so many things that I really wanted to find out more about, especially with his past and the kind of darker side to the main character, and then those just kept getting pushed in the back and it focused on battles. And I don't even remember enough of this one, honestly, to even talk about it. But I, I just remember it felt like oh, everything I liked about the character is gone. And everything I liked about the, the, the kind of setup that we're dealing with here is gone. And I just, I just didn't get into it at all. Uh, could not, could not stand it. I did, I, I guess in the middle of this, I'd, I'd forgotten that there was one that I loved in here. Prince of Ravens, uh, the, uh, sequel to City of Ravens. This is by Richard Baker, again, and it's so strange. Richard Baker is so hit or miss, apparently. I didn't even realize those two were together. Um, you know, with fourth edition, I'm just kind of, some of these things randomly choosing where they fit chronologically. And, and so who knows, could be completely off, uh, according to this page that I just happened to come up with. This one has a for sure date, and that's 1479. I honestly don't remember a lot of the details of this book, but I remember loving it and being really surprised because I was like, okay, you know, Baker has to uh, think up some reason for Jack to wake up in the present, I guess, you know, the future, essentially, that doesn't seem stupid, and he has to think up a reason for this, and he has to think up a reason for that, and he has to, you know, you know it, it's like, how how do you not make it just about him waking up, and how do you make it still that fun kind of, uh, there's a term for it, that Tom Jones-esque style writing, where it's like, you know, uh, an affable ne'er-do-well as the main character who keeps kind of going from one adventure to another. For a second there, I forgot Google existed, went to Google, a picaresque novel. It's a picaresque novel. Baker really pulls this off with aplomb. He manages to make Jack just as entertaining and just as uh, intriguing as he did in the first book. And the way that he survives, and I don't even remember what they were, but the way that he survives is different from the ways that the other characters who show up in uh, the present, uh, 1479, survive. And I was really impressed by that because they, I mean, all the different ways that people show up made sense. It's not like the entire cast is back, but at least one other character makes it back. And according to this page that I found, this was an ebook only as well. I, I, I have this and I know that there for a while, not for a while, like for a day, I think it was an accident because it only seemed to last for like an hour and a half. Uh, Realms ebooks were just $2.99 on Amazon. And so I grabbed a bunch of them and this is one of them. It's not really germane to the conversation, just letting you know, <laughs> keep an eye out, I guess. If you don't know about CamelCamelCamel.com, check it out. CamelCamelCamel, you can put in uh, a website from Amazon and it will track things for you. And if they go below the price that you set, it'll send you an email. Great stuff. But they didn't pay me, just mentioning that, throwing it out there. So yeah, Prince of Ravens, I, it's, it's, if you, if you, I, I mean, it's not as good as the first one. And obviously, if Baker had been allowed to keep Jack in the third edition timeline, probably you could have done a lot more fun stuff without having to spend any time exploring that whole how did this happen. But it totally works. It's fun. 
I'm not sure. Like, I... <laughs> I enjoy both the fun standalone books and the bigger kind of dramatic, meaningful books, you know, like um, uh, like the, the uh, Twilight War stuff, everything with Erebus Kale, building, building, building to something. I really enjoyed all of that stuff. Uh, overall, I enjoyed a lot of the, the Sembian stuff, which, which a lot of it was standalone, but it still kind of felt like it was building towards something, right? But, you know, like Crypt of the Moaning Diamond by Rosemary Jones, that was such an awesome little standalone fun story. And I, I guess that was third edition, though. I, I was thinking of fourth edition stuff. It seems like fourth edition so far has fared better when it's uh, more fun standalone stuff. But maybe I just feel that, I mean, I guess to, altogether, that's more what fourth edition was going for, right? Like that whole, uh, what, what's it called? The, the thousand points of light or whatever, you know, that, that seemed to be their focus, right? So... Maybe that's really all there is, and some of it works and some of it doesn't. I'm, I'm not sure. In any case, loved Prince of Ravens. <laughs> okay, but so then I also tried reading Miss Shore, and wow, I honestly, I'm looking at the title, and I'm like, I don't remember a damn thing about it. I had to look it up to see who wrote it. It was Jalee Johnson, um, whose stuff I've in general enjoyed, and I just, uh, I didn't get into it at all. And, and wow, I, I, I honestly don't remember uh, why. I just remember feeling really frustrated because I wanted, wanted, wanted so much to like this because I really did like Julie Johnson's earlier stuff. I mean, I didn't think it was the best thing ever, but I enjoyed it, and I, I thought she brought a good voice uh, to the realms. But yeah, this one just did not work for me at all. Really cool cover, and it sounds interesting, but yeah, for whatever reason... I, 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 it's, it's on the tip of my tongue, and I swear there was something in either the prologue or the first chapter where I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those books, but I don't remember what the hell it was. Similarly, I, I tried reading Blackstaff Tower by Stephen Shend. You know, as, as much as I really liked that Blackstaff changed in the hundred years, that there wasn't some sort of way that Arun Sun survived, that, it, you know, I, I, I liked that, that the, the Blackstaff became a legacy, you know? Uh, as much as I liked that idea, I got, like, two chapters into this, which was a fun couple of chapters. I remember the new Blackstaff, like, banging with some chick out in, like, the field, and there was a little age play, and that was kind of fun. Uh, and then, like, some people tried to taunt him, and he's like, oh, these... Silly people, because I'm like a level 7 billion wizard and everything. And and I just... And then I think it turns out that they're stronger than he thought. And that's where the novel, uh, where the story kicks in. I, I Honestly, I don't remember the details. But in any case, I, I just got to this point, like a few chapters in, where I was like, you know, why do I give a shit? Like, if the only reason that I should care is because this is the person who inherited the Blackstaff title, I don't. And... If I should care about the story, it's not a really... It, the story doesn't pull me in. And I just felt... I don't know. I think that feeling that I had with this book specifically really summed up how I was feeling about 4th edition in general. It's like the books that really work for me so far have been the books that just do their own thing and don't give a shit about the past. Uh, the books that try to incorporate the past. I'll always say that, and then, of course, I talked about Prince of Ravens, which I friggin' loved completely, and it's nothing, but <laughs> it's it's just, it's like, I don't care if you jumped 100 years in the future. I really want to write more about Jack, so he survived, and uh, whatever. But overall, I, I think the ones that I've enjoyed the most are just like, hey, we're in this world now, let's accept it and enjoy this world. This, you know, it, it, it just felt like, why should I care? And the only reason that I should care is because it's the name Blackstaff. And I'm like, I just didn't. And I, I'm i not saying there shouldn't be a book about the new Blackstaff, but I guess the story just wasn't enough for me. I, I felt like if you're going to write a story about the new Blackstaff, it has to be something that really pulls me in. The, I, I just reached this state of like Forgotten Realms ennui after this book. And I know this seems to happen with me a lot. And every time that it happens, my uh, state of staring into the abyss lasts longer and longer. And I apologize for everybody excited to see where things go. I think it's crazy. I, I keep getting new subscribers in the year that I've been off, off the air. And I'm like, I'm guessing it must be Realms Remembered that's pulling people in because... 
Still not many views on the overtly mocking game stuff, which, uh, hey, if you have listened to them or watched them, thanks. But it's it's now been so long, and um, I'm, like, I can't believe that I've gone a year without reading Realm stuff. That's crazy, because it's been such a part of my life now for so long. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to get back into it, and really curious to hopefully find some stuff that speaks to me and is exciting. I started talking about this, and I totally didn't realize that I've still got two more books that I skipped through. City of the Dead by Rosemary Jones, another of the Welcome to Waterdeep books. Um, Rosemary Jones, you know, I mentioned earlier, I really liked her uh, Crypt in the Moaning Diamond, and I tried reading this, and it just felt so dull and so uninteresting. I remember she had, what was it, a short story somewhere, right? And it, and it was about the same characters as this book, uh, in the City of the Dead, and I think I like the short story, but this book just bored me to tears. Or at least I think. Now I'm like, shit, did I dislike the short story and like the novel? I don't think I liked it, because I think I went through this period of, like, just not liking anything that I tried to read. Also on the list is All Mr. Must Die by Ed Greenwood, and it kind of started out strong, where, you know, because of Mistress Death, Elminster is uh, dealing with this, and he's he's kind of this broken, crazy old man, and he's like feeding weird shit to the symbol, and it's just it's it it it's it starts out in this really interesting place, and I was like, oh wow, like Greenwood's really gonna branch out and do something different. That's cool. Like I'm excited about that. And then it just man, I I just I remember it going all over the place, and it it. Like, a big portion of the story is about how, I can't remember the area that he lives in, Shadowdale or whatever, but he, he helps out, oh, Cormier, right, right, he helps out the king there a lot, uh, or he did, and, like, now the new king doesn't trust him as much, and I, I, I remember there being, like, the subplot of him having to, like, sneak into the castle now because people didn't trust him because he's this crazy old man or something like that, and that, I, I don't know, I just, I didn't buy it, and I thought it was a silly place to take Elminster, and then, like, at the end, he's become, like, an ash golem or something really bizarre like that. Like, it just, he keeps having all these, like, fake deaths. Like, that's how he ends up as an ash golem who only speaks psionically or some weird shit like that. And I was just kind of like, like, what the hell am I reading? And why am I reading this, you know? It, it just, I, like, I know I'm not the biggest Elminster fan in general, but I, I kind of thought that because I had enjoyed a couple of them there, that maybe I'd kind of gotten into Greenwood's rhythm or whatever and i i would really dig it and uh no just just sadly not at all yeah i i i kept going through it because i was like oh something important will happen and and blah 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 blah, blah. and it just it just nothing ever worked for me in this i think i will try the next one simply because i really want to like greenwood stuff and that's really what it boils down to yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try at least one more. Maybe I'll try the last of this trilogy or whatever. But in any case, did not work for me, uh, although I really did like the beginning. Also, I just wanted to mention, I should have mentioned this on the last podcast because it was so short, but I did want to mention that one of the things that I've been doing over the past year is going through and buying Kindle editions and then grabbing the Audible editions for like three bucks on top of that of some of the books. I listened to the entire Avatar trilogy again and... Wow, did I really get a lot of the details wrong when I was talking about the Avatar trilogy on here. I really still liked it overall, but I thought Waterdeep was kind of weak, honestly. Especially, um, Tantris I thought had kind of a weak third act, but in, in general, uh, not, not, as, uh, not as bad as I remembered, and uh, Waterdeep not as good as I remembered. And a lot of the stuff that I remember from the Avatar trilogy really didn't happen until books four and five, so... Uh, whoops, and I still don't remember how the hell Adon ended up. Uh, it's so annoying, because I really like Adon's character and the path that he goes through. And uh, In any case, and, and they're just so kind of second edition written, you know? Like, they're so, like, I, oh, I get so tired of that old thing where it's like, the swordsman, the swordsman, the swordsman. And it's like, I get that you don't just want to keep saying his name, but I would rather you just keep saying somebody's name than doing that. And over-explaining motivation, and yada, yada, yada. Anyway. Uh, also, I tried giving Iron Helm a listen, and uh, got maybe a third through it, and just uh, then I was like, oh, I think I'm done. <laughs> so yeah, in, in, in general, um, been going through uh, some second edition stuff, and digging that. Um, I mean, overall, even though 
Like, it doesn't sound like it from what I said, but just been enjoying the experience. I, I think a lot of it, too, is, you know, especially since I am an audiobook narrator myself, I'm pretty judgmental when audiobooks aren't really enjoyable. And, uh, yeah, they did not get the best people to do these books. A lot of them sound like they're being paid by the minute or something, and it's like... Like, I, I listened to... Oh, I listened to the first Elminster book as well, and... Uh, Wow, that, that took, like, months to get through. It was still so difficult. But, like, I had to listen to it at, like, 1.5 speed because the narrator was... I, I mean, literally, like, even at 1.5 speed, it was like Elminster came into the cave and was confused by what he saw. So, at regular speed, it was like, Elminster came into the cave and was confused by what he saw. And obviously for an audiobook, you want to go slow enough that people can understand every word and every syllable. But, you know, it, it's, it, it, it turns into a slog. Like, I would lose concentration in the middle of sentences because it was so ridiculously slow. So very, very frustrating, and I don't know what the hell they were going for there. And I hope that some of the newer stuff is better, but I haven't listened to it, so I don't know. Kind of a tangent, but, you know, whatever. We're here to talk about the realms, right? And it's realms related. So, uh, so yeah. Um, obviously, I want to hear how you guys are doing. 2016 kind of <laughs> had a sucker punch ending there, huh? I thought, uh, thought things were going pretty decently. And then it was like, oh, no, 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 you're in hell. I hope everyone is doing okay. And as always, I am curious to hear feedback. So let me know what you think, where you agree, and where you disagree. For now, this is Michael T. Bradley. Realms Remembered.